Plane breaking versus plane bending. Plane bending is, and you've probably done it yourself or seen it plenty of times, newer spinners will go from a, a wheel plane weave and they'll easily bend into a corkscrew, into your horizontal plane and then back. This is plane bending. There's no clean break, it's just kind of manipulating the poi to being in a different plane. So that's plane bending. Um, plane breaking is a clean break. It can be easily be defined into lines, segments, or quadrants, whatever you want to call it. It's a clean break of that plane. So that is what we're going to be covering in 3D spinning because that is the biggest part of it, um, at, at least as is primary in modern spinning is the concept of these planes and the clean breaking of them. So, we're going to cover that. We're first of all going to cover it in anti-spin because at least in my opinion, anti-spin is the easiest. Um, there are also in-spin variants and extension variants. Um, the first thing I'll show, and we're not going to worry about the back side just yet. We're going to play around with just the front. And more specifically, these top two cubes these top two cubes right here. Those are what I feel to be the best places to start because the stalls and the, the just basically the movements in here are the two easiest cubes to play in. So, the first two stalls that I'm going to show you are simply this one. It's almost just like a pendulum but you're going to bring it a little bit higher into an up stall. So practice this a little bit. Practice it with your left arm. Really focus on getting your hand underneath that poi when it stalls up. Because if you don't, then it doesn't quite give the effect, as you can see here. And even as you get comfortable and even good at 3D poi, you'll still have trouble with that, getting that hand underneath. But just as long as you keep it in mind and you're mindful of it, try to keep that straight. Once you get those two stalls comfortably done, you're going to do it in the front. Stall out in front of you, and just try to keep these stall points at about shoulder level. Work on these stalls. Do it with your left arm. And get comfortable with that. Once you're comfortable with both of these hands doing all of these stalls, what I want you to do is work on it with two hands. Go like this, with both hands, and then in the front with both hands. And I'm not separating these particular movements, I'm actually plane breaking at the top. At that stop, top stall point, that's going to be our plane breaking point for transitioning between these, two st these uh, three stalls. So, work on that, and it's just a matter of you stall and then you move the direction of your hand. If your hand comes up here and then you stall, if you move your hand forward, your poi will follow. As long as your hand goes where it's supposed to go, then your poi will follow because the movement of your poi is a direct result of the movement of your hand. So, don't worry so much about what your poi are doing, worry more about what your hands are doing because that's the important part. As long as your hands are making the right movements, your poi will do the same. Okay? So it's going up and then forward. Up and then to the side. With both arms. Okay, once you got all those stalls drilled and down, what I want you to do is starting at the bottom, we're going to spin in two planes at once. We're going to do these stalls in two separate planes. So I want you to kind of pendulum out one poi in front of you and one out to the side. And we're going to do it at the same time, okay? So we're going to go out like this. Maybe practice that a few times just to get used to your poi being in two separate planes. 
And when you get out to this part where the poi kind of zero out and start to go down, I want you to bring those poi up into an up stall. So go up like this, and then go down. Up like that, up, and then down. Up stall, down. And we're gonna practice this. And the whole time, keeping your shoulders squared toward the front, whichever direction you choose to be the front. And we're gonna practice this. Get that drill then down. Go back to the other side. Practice that a few more times. Once you get that and you're comfortable with spinning in these multiple planes, what we're going to do is use that plane breaking point at the top again. We're going to come out, plane break, and then come over here and down. Out, plane break, out, and down. You know, it doesn't have to be super clean. Honestly, this is going to take some time to learn and get good at. It takes a lot of time and a lot of drilling, and that's why I'm showing you these drills as opposed to just showing you what you can do and hoping you'll figure it out. The drills are very important. You need to drill a lot. I drill all the time, just sitting around, watching a movie, or hanging out with my friends. I'm constantly drilling. Okay, what I want you to do is, once you've got that down, I want you to start throwing in that horizontal plane change. Now, before we get into the whole pattern, to work on your horizontal anti-spins, a really good way, or what I found to be a good way, is to float out like this, to get your poi where it needs to start off at, okay? Um, for the actual anti-spin, you need to put your arm out and bend it up like this. This will give your poi some room to go through because it's going right by your head and it's going to come in between your arm. If you don't bend your arm up, it's going to just kind of hit you in the shoulder or the bicep depending on how long your poi is. Just kind of hits it, it will screw up your planes, it'll throw off your whole flow, honestly. Um, so work on bending that arm up and just kind of drilling that. It's almost like a pendulum coming through your arm, kind of like this. You're just redirecting it to the side. And this is very difficult. This is one of the things that took me uh, at least a couple weeks of drilling over and over again. Like I was talking about doing it while watching TV, watching movies, YouTube videos, hanging out with your friends. Just whenever you have time, just pick one of these up and practice it. And do it with both hands. <clears throat> this is, this, this horizontal plane is a very key part of 3D spinning because it really breaks apart your planes and really makes it obvious that you're spinning in 3D. These two planes, sure, are cool on their own, but what really breaks it apart is doing this horizontal portion of it. That's really how you define what you're doing and how much skill it takes. Because honestly, not a lot of people are spinning in 3D right now. It's kind of, it's sort of a new thing. It's been around for a while and it's, it's catching on in some places, it's catching on in other places, but there's not a lot of people doing it right now. As far as, far as I know, I haven't seen a lot of it. So, this horizontal plane stuff is very important and very key. You don't have to have it perfect just yet. It's going to take some time. So you can be drilling this horizontal plane and then other times when you're actually spinning and you're practicing and learning, you can throw it in with this drill. You're gonna throw it in with this drill right here, the first, one of the first ones that I showed you, and you're gonna throw it in like that. You're just going to transfer over to the other cube, and basically that's all it's going to be at this time. It's just a way to switch between which cube you're spinning in. That is the final drill for this tutorial, and that's what I want you to learn before watching the second tutorial. Thanks for watching, and watch the second one whenever you're ready. Okay, thanks.